the spirit that hovers. Dear Inner Circle, In 2007, we packed up our entire lives, including our two toddlers, all into our Tarago to move from Melbourne to Sydney. We had a heart full of dreams for our next season in Mount Druitt, but there were no hard plans, no accommodation arranged, and all we had was just a few phone numbers scrawled on a piece of paper. If life is a daring adventure, then we were going by the seat of our pants. The only thing we were certain of was our trajectory. Fast forward a few months and we were moving into our very own home. It was a house marked for demolition after the housing department couldn't find anyone who wanted to live in it. But for us, it was a sign of things to come. Doubt quickly morphed into a sense of certainty though. I was convinced we were going to grow old here. Thankfully, a wise mentor took me aside and set me straight. John, never be so arrogant as to think you'll be here forever or that you hold all the answers to the question, the questions that are on this community's hearts. Your only job for the first few years is to shut up, to shut up and just listen to the cries and the pain and the whispers of the spirit that hovers over this land. Discern the promises held for this place and then work as hard as you can to inch those promises a little closer to fulfilment in the short time that you have been allotted. Know that you will not finish the task, but neither are you free to stand aside from it. What wisdom! Life around us flourishes when we find ourselves as necessary, significant, but not central to it all. There is power in that, which seems like a paradox. For over 65,000 years, the first peoples of Australia have maintained an unbroken connection to this land, its stories and its spirit. Yet our 122-year-old constitution remains silent, not reflecting or recognising this ancient culture. Long before any of us called this place home, there was a spirit that hovered over this land. Australia's history, while rich, carries with it painful memories and moments of deep injustice. The scars from families torn apart and policies born out of prejudice are evident. However, the present moment often offers us an opportunity to amend. A simple yet profound request stands before us. We are being asked to recognise First Nations people by saying yes to supporting their voice in the Constitution. The invaluable insights and deep wisdom of our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples will finally be used to advise on issues that impact their lives, leading to more informed government decisions. There's an unfulfilled promise in our nation's story and a gap in our shared history. Right now we have the chance to bridge it together. This referendum is our moment. Our moment to listen, to respect and to act on the Uluru Statement from the Heart that encapsulates years of hopes and desires. It comes from the heart. Allow it to speak to yours. This Saturday, I urge each of you to choose love over hate. Say a resounding yes to the recognition and inclusion of the First Nations in our Constitution. Together, we can make history. Thank you for being a part of our inner circle. Mm-hmm.